Hi, Anime Guy here. The story begins with a skeletal-like figure by the name of Lord Gown Ains. Lord Ains is the ruler of the Grey Tomb of Nazareth. His plan is to rule the world and become the supreme overlord at the palace. Lord Ains is seen congratulating his subjects for a job well done at the Riestes Festival. He told Seabass and Solution to step forward. Lord Ains wanted to give them a special gift as their performance at the festival was excellent. He told them to choose any reward of their choice. After they answered, he granted them their wishes and told another one of his subjects to step forward. This time, the person stepping forward was Entoma. Entoma lost her voice to a witch. Lord Ains asked her what she would like as a reward for her own act of heroism at the festival. Estona replied, saying that all she wanted was her voice back. That was her wish. Lord Ains made it clear that he couldn't grant her the wish, but the only thing he could do for her was to give her details, which would help her find the witch. The next day, we see Sixus and her fellow maids who work at the great tomb of Nazareth, eating together in the cafeteria. Sixus seemed to be extremely happy as she was assigned to take care of Lord Ains throughout the day. To the maid's greatest surprise, Miss Lupus Regina shows up at their table. Lupus Regina is one of the superiors at the great tomb of Nazareth. She was recently posted to stay at the Carne village, a village filled with humans. Sixus rushes over to Lord Ains' room. Lord Ains, on getting there, asked why the maids always come so early. She replied that it was because of their loyalty to him. Lord Demiurge comes over to see Ains. He asks about Albedo. Lord Ains replied that he commanded Albedo to take the day off. Later on, Albedo is seen by the other female servants. Albedo tries riding a bicorn, but it doesn't move. One of the maids tells Albedo that the same way a unicorn allows bad people to ride it, so the bicorn does not let good people ride it. Albedo was filled with anger as he knew she was still pure. The other maids boasted about how they weren't pure. The next day, Mare goes to give a letter she had received from someone to Lord Ains. Lord Ains notices that Mare was behaving weirdly and asked about her odd behavior. She replied that nothing was wrong. As the servants were busy announcing their loyalty to Lord Ains, Albedo became a rogue. Her mission was to no longer be pure, and so she wanted Lord Ains to make her impure. Lord Ains is seen assigning new positions to his servants. He makes Albedo the overseer of the Guardians of Nazareth. He also makes Lord Lord Demiurge, the strategist. Lord Ains tells Demiurge to tell the whole of Nazareth what the plans are. Demiurge started by stating that due to the actions of Mare and her group, the underworld of the Riestes was now Nazareth's. He further stated that the conquering of the Riestes was nothing more than just a stepping stone which Lord Ains planned to use to complete his goal. He stated that Lord Ains' goal was world domination. Demiurge suggested that Nazareth be announced publicly. Demiurge also also stated that Lord Ains had already started to think about world domination, which was his main reason for subjecting Carne Village. The next day, at Carne Village, Henri is seen walking to Nefai House. Kaijala accompanies her to the place. Kaijala is a goblin. Apparently, due to low financial rates in the Carne Village, the villagers employed the help of goblins in protecting the village. The reason for Henri going to Nefai's house was to get the herbs that Nefai was working on. Nefai happened to be the only pharmacist in the village. His herbs were sold in the city by Henri. This was the village's only means of income. They are welcomed by an awful scent as they reach Nefai's house. As they knocked on the door, Nefai came out happy. His happiness was caused due to the completion of a medicine. He stated that after much trial and error, he had finally made the potion. Kaijali interrupts, saying Nefai was high on fumes. Kaijali asks Henri to go back home. After Henri had left, Kaijali Kaijali tried telling Nefai to confess his feelings for Henri. Kaijali told him to start paying more attention to Henri. At breakfast, a group of goblins have an argument about who Henri loves the most. Meanwhile, Nefai is lost in thought. On seeing him, Henri asks if he's okay. Nefai loses consciousness, so Henri carries him home to let him rest. Kaijali, on the other hand, has his hands full with the humans. Kaijali had been training the humans in case of any attack on the village. Nimu tells Henri Henri that the plant they planned on using in making the herbs wasn't enough. While they were still discussing what to do about the ingredients, a goblin came in to warn them about some suspicious movements in the forest. The forest is the only place the plants grow, and it was very important to get the plants immediately. Out of depression, Henri goes with Nefai and some goblins. They finally arrive deep inside the forest and see the plant. While picking the plant, Kaijali notices some movement and urges everyone to take cover. 
suffer. Shortly after, they see a goblin being chased by a beast. Ulri urges them to save the goblin. The goblins obey the command and kill the beast. Nephi tests his potion on the injured goblin. The potion works excellently well. The potion is a healing potion, and so, in a few seconds, the injured goblin gains full recovery. The goblin tells them his name and the reason he ran. Its name is Agu, and the main reason it ran was because the giant of the east and the great snake of the west wanted to become allies. They take Agu back to the village. On reaching the village, Agu says it looked like the Monument of Ruin, which was a place that recently appeared in the Great Forest. Inside the village, Agu started elaborating on what he had told them in the forest. He said that the giant of the east had plans to turn both goblins and ogres into foot soldiers. So, in order to free themselves, all the goblins had decided to run away. Nephi uses the chance to give Lupus Regina the potion. He begs that she'll show the potion to Lord Ains. Later in the night, Kaijali comes to wake Henri up due to the intrusion of some ogres who wanted to join and become members of the village. Henri, after addressing them formally, made them members of the village. The next day, Henri goes to the city to sell the herbs. Before entering the city, she goes through some investigation to find out and be sure that she wasn't carrying any magic or magic-related object. She is found with a horn which can call goblins. The soldiers start interrogating her more and more, but due to the intervention of the dark warrior, Momon, she continues and sells all the herbs. She also buys some weapons for the goblins. Finally, she tries seeking help from the temple, but isn't given any help because she was not able to pay for the services. On her way back to the city, she is met by Kaijali and some other goblins, and so she decides to give them the weapons. They thank her and their god too for a good day's work. The next day, the village chief calls Henri. He insists that she take the post as chief. He tries to explain that she would do very well if she was the chief of the village, but she refuses, saying she wasn't ready to handle such a responsibility. She goes over to Nephi to ask him for advice. Nephi encourages her to take the role and become the new village chief. Lord Ain seems to be angry with Lupus Regina for not telling him about the plan of the giant of the east and the demon snake of the west. To lighten the mood, Lupus Regina gives Lord Ains Nephi's potion. This lightens the mood a bit, as Lord Ains immediately becomes happy. Lord Ains tells Mare to prepare because she was going to accompany him to see the giant of the east and the demon snake of the west. Mare tries to tell him to do otherwise, but he stands on the statement. The next day, Mare and Ains embark on a journey into the forest. Mare got some information about where the giant of the east normally stood, and so she took Lord Ains to the exact location. On getting to the cave, Mare tells the beast she brought to be on standby while she and Lord Ains go into the cave. They finally enter the cave. They are welcomed by a strange scent. As they go into the cave, they see ogres feeding. Ogres are carnivorous, and so they try to eat Lord Ains. Without much effort, Lord Ains kills virtually all that attacked him. He then asks to see the giant of the east. The giant of the east happened to be a troll. Trolls have the power of regeneration, which makes them nearly impossible to beat. Lord Ain sees the demon snake of the west. Although the snake was using magic to make it invincible, Ains still saw through its invincibility. The trolls were laughing at Lord Ains because of his long name. The giant of the east tried to beat Lord Ains, but due to how powerful Ains was, the troll couldn't hurt him. Ains ends up beating beating the troll over and over again. The snake wanted to run, but was caught by Mare. Lord Ains used the aura of despair to make all the trolls die instantly. The snake tried to beg, saying he would pledge his loyalty to Ains. Ains spared his life and went back home. Ains was looking for a way to give someone in the village the magic sword he got from the troll, so he asked the snake to find some trolls to attack the village. The next day, the villagers were told to find somewhere to hide, as the giant of the east was a about to attack them. The goblins and the humans Kaijali had been training were forced to change into battle gear. They had been already ready for war and weren't ready to lose their village yet. They reinforced the gates but left one weakened. The reason being that they could get a chance to attack the trolls head on. When the trolls finally reached the gate, the humans were waiting with arrows. The arrows were for long range attacks. They did a great deal of killing some ogres. The plan was working but Kaijali was worried that the trolls trolls might have a magic caster. When the villagers noticed that the giant of the east was amongst the trolls that was attacking
striking them, they became afraid. But Kejali addressed them without fear. To him, he wanted to make sure that the humans didn't get too afraid, as a turnover in their morale might mean detriment to the village. Meanwhile, Henri and Nefai were trying to hide together, but their luck ran out as a troll smelt where they were. Henri planned that if they used the ogre smell to cover themselves, then maybe they would be able to buy some time. At some point, the plan failed, as the ogre could tell the two apart. In order to save Henri, Nefai told her to run. He said she should allow him to stay and fight for the woman he loved. Kaijali, on the other hand, noticed that the trolls weren't regenerating. He decided to use them to his advantage. Nefai was in a heated battle with the troll, and at the last minute, when all hope was about to be lost, Lupus Regina came to help. She killed the troll and burnt it. On the other hand, Henri was very happy that Nefai didn't die. She made him promise never to do such a thing again. Kaijali and his crew did a good job in defeating the Giant of the East. Kaijali took the sword of the Giant of the East. Meanwhile, Henri confessed that she had some feelings for Nefai. Lupus Regina told Henri about the invitation to Lord Ain's palace. She was to come with Nefai and Nimu, her younger sister. The next day, they set out for Lord Ain's palace. On getting there, they were received warmly. Nimu couldn't resist but show off her excitement. She begged Lord Ains to take her on a tour throughout the palace. Lord Ains agreed to take her on the tour. Lord Flunder tries to control the Death Knight. After much trial, he still fails. His plan is to become the greatest magic caster in the world. A knight comes to tell Lord Flunder that the Adamanite class adventurers were seeking an audience with him. Meanwhile, the Adamanite adventurers walk around the city. They see a bunch of knights. One of the adventurers exclaimed how weak the knights were. The other one reminded him that the knights only looked weak when compared to themselves. The knights, on the other hand, were surprised to see Adamanite adventurers in the city. Farlord decides to address Flunder on the issue of the demon Jalda Bayo, who had escaped from them. He urged Flunder to investigate the matter with immediate effect. Prince Barbro forces himself into his father's room. On getting there, the head warrior gave him a warning. Barbro couldn't take this, and so he had to clear his mind. He told the head warrior that commoners aren't meant to talk to a noble in such a manner. His father, on the other hand, just told him to calm down, and that the head warrior was just doing his job. Foresight, a group of four adventurers who were given a task alongside other people. The task entailed the finding of a monument of ruins. The reward was so promising that Foresight decided to come back together just to go for it. When the day came for the task to be carried out, Foresight set out to meet other groups. On getting to the place, they see that their chances of winning are stiff. The competition was tight, but they didn't let their morale reduce. The client's count addressed all the groups and gave each group a slight near. Slight near are like carriages. Momon addressed them too, asking why they wished to embark on such a mission. Someone replied, because of the money. Momon was surprised that people could lay their lives down for money. He then apologized for asking such a stupid question. Will Flunder get the chance to capture the demon, Jaldabaoth, or will Foresight find the Monument of Rain first and defeat their competition? We'll find out that and more in the next part of this recap. For now, kindly like this video and subscribe to our channel to get more anime recaps like this. Till then, kindly suggest the next anime series you would like to see us recap and we promise to make it as breathtaking as this one. Take care and stay safe.